वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे this is the thing that people keep talking about. Was it pre-planned or was it a last minute thing? Because you saw recently even Brar when making his articles, oh the British were not involved, it was a last minute thing. All the planning was done by the British people. She was, Indira Gandhi was trying to negotiate a, 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 a treaty with the Sikhs, but at the last moment we had to go in. That's, a, that's what they keep telling us. Okay? But in 1982, there was a model of Harimandar Sahib made, complete, the complex, yeah, in the Doon Valley. The Doon Valley is like the army area. It's like Sandhurst. Yeah, Sandhurst is a training ground for the Sikhs, or Purbright, or, you, you know, uh, many places the army have. Before Santaji was in Harimandar Sahib, this model was made. She always planned to attack Harimandar Sahib. Yeah. R.K. Sinha is the general at that time. He was in charge of making this model. He trained his troops on this model. But he thought it was a training exercise. When she said, I want to attack, he refused. He goes, I'm not going to attack. How can an army attack its own people? He refused. A, a hero for us, yeah? There he is at the bottom. You can watch his videos on YouTube. That's a, that's a frozen screen from an interview with him. Day and night news, yeah, interviews R.K. Sinha. You can get that online. So Sinha is removed from his post. Yeah, He's a general of the... He's a, he's a very senior officer. I can't remember. But I think he's like chief of staff or whatever. He's a senior guy. Yeah. And as he's removed, Verdi has put in charge. He takes up, he goes, I'll do it. And who else says I'll do it? Brar. Yeah. So I put a couple of pictures there. Okay. Obviously the UK was requested for help and the SAS went in. That's the SAS flag on the right hand side, the, the star, the dagger with the two wings. Yeah. So the model was made. Okay. In February 94 we know that advice had already been given by that time. It's been recorded that advice, guy's already gone over there, done the recce, given his advice. Don't know what the advice is, obviously we want to find out what the advice was. But the advice has been given in February, so it was pre-planned. Yeah? Brar keeps on saying it was a hasty operation, last minute operation. Yeah? So that's why they couldn't plan for it properly. But they're planning again and again. They're working out what to do well in advance. There's people, other people ask this question, why was Sanji in Akal Takht? Why were they in Harmandir Sahib? Why were they in a temple? Okay? Why were there weapons there? Key thing to note here, Sanji was not in Harimandar Sahib. Darbar Sahib is a complex. Yeah? It's got rooms to live, it's got massive langars, different preaching halls, it's got the golden temple, it's also got the Akal Takht. The Akal Takht is where Sanji was. Yeah? They were not in Harimandar Sahib. Akal Takht is our political and military capital. Yeah? It wasn't the case before the MPs. When the MPs went around and the king was here, the king was in charge, then he would have his round table in it and all of his soldiers and all of his generals would sit around. Yeah? That's what the Akal Takht is for us. All the generals would gather there. The army was there. Who was it made by? Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji. Yeah? And what did Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji keep there? The Akal Sena, the army of God. So the Akal Sena was based at Akal Takht. So the historic precedent was there. Our armies <coughs> and our soldiers were based at the Akal Takht. So what can you say? Well, if a Guruji had it there, then that's what the Sikhs are going to do, aren't they? So why can't we have our soldiers there, if our Gurus had them there? Why are we being dictated what a religious place should be? Why are other people telling us what our religious place should be? Our religion is made by our Gurus. What our Gurus did decides what we should do, not what other people think. Okay. Baba Deep Singh Ji fought to get there. We've had battles there. Sukha Singh, Mas Sukha Singh, Matab Singh went into Harmandar Sahib. Yeah? They killed all those guys in that room. We told you the story. Yeah? Sukha Singh, one man massacre machine went around the room and Matab Singh chopped off the head of Masaranga right there in Harmandar Sahib. Yeah? So when the Sikhs are being attacked to Harmandar Sahib, then we do bring our army there. We do bring our soldiers there because that's our home. Shastan Ki Adin Hai Raj. Yeah? Our Guru says, Bina kese sastan diho na didari. So listen to my benti mere pyare sikho. Do not come in front of me without kesh and, and shastar and weapons. So if our Guruji is asking us to come in front of him with weapons, why can't we take our weapons into our holiest place? Holiness for a Sikh is a place where shastar are there. Guru Gansh Sahib Ji right at the front of them is kirpans are there. 
This is a concept that the Indians have, concept the West might have, that a, whole, a temple is a place where there's no weapons. For us, it's the complete opposite. Where our Guru is, there the Khalsa is fully armed. And, the reminder, in the Punjabi Subha movement, when we were asking for rights, it also been attacked at that time. Yeah? And, <clears throat> I'm sure there must have been rumours about what was going on in the Dun Valley. There must have been rumours that they're going to attack. They've got a model of Harmandar Sahib. They're planning to attack. So they were going to fortify it. Of course, if a Sikh finds out that their main Gurdwara is going to get attacked, what are they going to do? Come on in. When did Santi officially move into Akhaldah? It was at the, I think, early 83 or end of uh, 82. Now, a key point to note here is, why would we defend Harimandar Sahib? What was there? All of our museum, our main artifacts are there. Guru's handwriting, Guru Sahib, they are hukum nami, likhe hoi, hat likhe hukum nami. Where are they now? Got burnt down, didn't they? Or they got nicked and then they got burnt down. So there's a very good reason for us to keep our army there and keep them out. Because when they're going to come in, they're going to destroy what we had. You got a kajana there, you're going to protect it. Sorry, go on. So if, you, if you knew where they actually got their weapons from? Um, actually, there's an interesting point about weapons, yeah? Obviously the Sikhs were armed, they bought weapons, but they were all... One of the statements from one of the Western journalists says, I think, it says that the weapons were so low, were so low class, like, you know, old, old, like, rifles, handmade, some even handmade weapons, yeah? Like people were making guns, right? That they were almost unarmed. They had like nothing there, like you know, AK 47s or whatever, you know, old, old, sh from, from Pakistan, obviously, a lot of the weapons were brought in, okay. Um, but there's proof that only a couple of days before, right, the Harmandar Sahib attack, that weapons were shipped in by the Indian government. They were shipped in, right, to look like there was loads of weapons when they went in. <laughs> yeah, go on. I think, uh, the, sorry, just the, the, the way that quote comes from about the weapons being shipped in is Ram Narayan Kumar. I'm going to put, his, uh, put the quote down later on, but that's from what I read in his. That they had police saying that the ships, that uh, trucks were allowed to go in, sponsored by the government, to go in with weapons inside. Because they put them on display afterwards, didn't they? Yeah, yeah to show what they, what they captured and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Or drugs they found inside and all this kind of stuff, yeah. Proper planting. What about you? Your point was. Yeah, you know this day and night news image? Yeah. There's something on the internet. The, the journalist who did that, his name is Gunwar Sandhu. He's a Sikh. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, if you punch in his name, this is like an eight part series. And it's really strong on interviews about the Sikhs who were inside with Bin Ramale. Yeah. And a lot of the Sikhs who tried to talk Brad out of it, who were part of the army. All right. And I mean, I have to say it's one of the best. I've seen on this. Yeah, that interview was amazing that we did yeah, it with. I've seen that, but this is eight yeah. part. Eight part. Well, there you go then. On the end of May. And so, day and night news. Just if you punch in Operation Blue Star, Gunwara Sundal, yeah. it goes part one to part eight, and it's about 45 minutes long. Okay. And he interviews a lot of people who are with Bindrale, and he talks to the army guys who are with Brad in the command centre, you know, mm. and they give their interviews. And you know, a lot of the army guys who were with, with Barad said that you know, don't go in there, whatever you do, and all that kind of stuff. And he was like, no, this is a surgical operation, we'll be out in two hours. Yeah. Well, Kanwar Sandhu then, on, on YouTube, yeah, day and night news. It's a, it's a bit biased though, he, he gives the kind of Indian side, but you, you know, you can read between the lines. Yeah. He's, he's done a 16 part documentary that goes through Indian history from Congress up to 84 as well, which is also worth watching. Alright, so he's on YouTube. There you go. Put it on the channel. Okay, now questions people ask, why didn't they just kill Santaji? If that was the main target, why not just kill them or attack, or just, you know, assassinate them, or, or even arrest them? Because this is the question that we should be asking, isn't it? Why attack with an army and tanks, when you could just go in and arrest him? Now, the key thing is, Santaji was quite easy to meet, even at that time, yeah? Indian politicians were going in to meet him in, in, in like May, he wasn't hiding away. People were turning up saying, can we meet with uh, Sanjay Nasingji, please? They're like, who are you? Oh, we're a politician, MP. Uh, come on in. A lot of people in India didn't believe what Indra Gandhi was telling. So they would go there and meet him and find out the truth. There's videos of him sitting at the, on top of the roof in May, in June. Not in June, obviously, but in, in, in May, they're sitting on top of the roof of, um, of the Langar Hall. That's what they used to be having there, you know, in, in the meetings and stuff. People were going up there. 
why would they attack them? Why not just shoot them? Supposed to kill Sanjana Singh Ji. Yeah? There's in uh, that Ram Narayan Kumar, he says that two days before the attack, most of those guys went out for a, to a wedding. They got in a van, they went out, and they were allowed back in. They had to arrest them, they're all at a wedding. Why not arrest them there? The question here is, it wasn't about Sanchi. That's the only, uh, the only conclusion we can draw. It was not about arresting Sanjana Singh Ji. Because they're all killing him. But this is what the lie we've been told, isn't it? And a lot of our parents, and a lot of the Indian people have bought this hook, line and sinker. They used heavy artillery, yeah? They didn't use like, let's go in there with the commandos, quickly go in there, kill Sanji, which they could have done anyway before. No. Artillery, tanks, helicopters and commandos, all sorts of things were used, yeah? Now, the Vice Chief of Police, yeah? Gurudev Singh, of Amritsar, this is the Vice Chief of the whole of police, Amritsar Police. He's saying, give me an arrest warrant. I will go in there and arrest them and come out. He goes, they will talk to me, I've met them. Give me an arrest warrant, I'll go in there, present it to him, he will come out. But they did not issue an arrest warrant. He, they refused to give an arrest warrant. Now, basically the attack was illegal as per Indian law. Yeah? Indian laws does not allow a government Allow, allow the government to do this, what they did. They must explore all the legal uh, angles of either arrest warrant, make a, uh, a warning, or um, you know, uh, 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 starve them out, whatever it is. But to attack, yeah, it's illegal. And now a question here, why June the 1st, okay? It's Guru Arjan Dev Ji Shahidi. Yeah? If you don't know what that is, Guru Arjan Dev Ji obviously was killed from, you know, was, was shaheed, they were cooked from underneath, it's a very hot day, people go to the Gurdwara, it's Chabil day, yeah, they give out nice rose water, yeah, thanda dud, yeah, ice creams, in the UK they give out ice creams, so this is a bit of like a, people go to Gurdwara, they want to go to Gurdwara on that day, okay, and they, were, what they were doing is, they were allowing people going into, into Harbandar Sahib, but they weren't allowed to come out, if you came out, you got arrested, but you were allowed to go in, yeah, secondly, any, all the trains were allowed to come into Amritsar, so people are coming from other parts of Punjab to come to Amritsar for the, for the uh, Mela, sh the Shahidi Jor Mela. Everybody's allowed in, but no trains are allowed out. So you're trapped in Amritsar, so you're going to go back to Haddarbar Sahib, innit? Right? Because that's where the Nivasis are, where do people stay as well? They stay in Harmanda Sahib, they sleep outside. If you go to Parkarma or Harmanda Sahib, people sleep on the Parkarma at night. In the hot. If people from Amritsar, from the town, leave their houses, and their beds is too hot in their houses, walk over to Darbar Sahib, lie down for the night, sleep there, and then go back home in the morning. It's cooler there. Okay. No warning was given before the attack. They didn't say, right, if you don't come out, we're going to start shelling. They didn't say, all the civilians are allowed to leave. Whoever stays behind, we're going to come and get you. No. They just started bombing. Just started shooting. Now, the other thing is, stop. I, I said to you before, they were going to stop the grain shipments and the tax on the 1st of June. And they attacked on the 1st of June. And then we see like a massive amount of correlation there. Yeah? This is something that's very rarely thought about. Like why that date? Okay? And the thing is, is there was a media blackout. This is, uh, amnesty was, was banned from being in Punjab. Yeah? And there was loads of propaganda. And this is what Brar quotes, yeah? That he was told is, that Khalistan is just about to be declared. They stopped tax and they stopped grain. Right? I'm sure there's other states in India that have done that before. Okay? And yet they say Khalistan is about to be declared. So the propaganda is this, right? It's all about separatism. The, the, the real issues are never dealt with and they're not, they're not dealt with afterwards as well. Designed to teach Sikhs a lesson, okay? Basically, know your place in India and accept it. And to break the spirit of the Sikhs. That was the key focus. So what happens? The defense are organized by General Subhag Singh. Tanks are shelling this. High army casualties, by the way, yeah? Subhag Singh was an expert. Okay, he was a very decorated general in the Indian Army. He was mastermind behind the, the Bangladesh a war to kick Pakistan, make it a separate country out. So, Akal Takht is destroyed. Okay, there's bullet holes everywhere. Um, they use um, like exploding shells on Akal Takht, yeah? Loads of them, like 60, 70 shells. Now, what happens to the prisoners inside the complex? Now, remember, there was 5,000 people. And every time you see these news documentaries, even recently when it happened, they always say 500 people were killed. But Sikh sources claim thousands. That's what you always get. Not independent sources, 
always fundamentally seek sources claim thousands. Yeah? Not people around Narayana Kumar who are saying there must have been about 5,000 people there at least. Okay? Treatment of prisoners inside, right? This is documented, this is happening from people that were inside, they're coming out and telling. People were trapped inside the different rooms. They were hiding all around the Darbar Sahib complex, okay, from the shells and stuff, right? What they do, what they do is when they go into Kartak and they kill all the people that are shooting with guns, then what they do is they take the people outside who are trapped inside the rooms, who are unarmed, bring them out, take the Dastara off, tie their hands up, okay, and shot them. Shot them dead. Okay, lined them up, all the men shot dead. Okay, there's pictures of these people being dragged around by the hair. Sikhs, you see, you've seen the NSYF pack. Okay, or what they did is lock them in the heat and say, We'll come back for you in a day. Yeah, in that heat in June, locking them in the, in, in the room with no water and no chance to go. It. When they opened the door, there was like two, three people alive, the rest of the people were dead. Yeah, thousands of people died in that way. Okay. Women and children, by the way, this is not like, we're not talking, the women and children were, were killed, not just the men. The people that they trapped, they killed, the people that they shot dead, okay, obviously mostly were men. Now here's the key thing, again it happens in November as well, bodies are taken away and cremated, no record is kept. Truckloads of Sikhs piled in, just taken away, burnt. No one knows who was burnt, no one knows who is dead. The Sikh reference library is then looted and burnt. Okay, it's all our Puratan, you know, priceless. What is it worth to see a piece of paper Guru Arjan Dev is writing on it? Kimat hai Yeah, just gone. 38 other Gurdwaras now are attacked at the same time. Key question, if it was about those people, those 187 people they claimed, yeah, then why did they go into 30 other Gurdwaras? And in these attacks where they attacked the other Gurdwari, hundreds of people are killed, if not thousands. It's not like a little thing, they attacked the Gurdwari. Went in with police and shot whoever was there. The Fisher story is basically a joke. The media is totally controlled and totally sold out. Now there's things to read. NSYF 10 days campaign. Obviously, Pais I've just mentioned about, um, what was his name again? That guy? Kanwar Sandhu, yeah? And then also Harinder Singh Sikri has done a very good Sikh research institute. So you have to type that Sikri. He's done a very good talk about 84. Okay? Um, many, many talks. So Savi Aurora put one of his up recently. So if you chop in Savi Aurora's channel. Hanji. Another book on this, which is called Fighting for Faith and Nation Dialogues with Yeah. Joy Cynthia, Cynthia Kapli Mahmood and Joyce Pettigrew write two very good books on this as well. Yeah. Um, Ram Narayan Kumar's book, Reduced to Ashes, very good to read as well. Okay. It's published, it's, like, it's not a book, it's like a white paper. And it's, it's on insaf.org. Insaf, if you don't know, is a charity which documents. Um, things, the disappearances of people, especially after 84. Okay, Okay. what happens in October and November now? So we know, right? 31st of October, 9.20 a.m. Satwan Singh, Bian Singh and Ker Singh. They assassinate Indira Gandhi. These three people are involved, not just the two of them. Ker Singh didn't actually shoot her, but he was involved in the planning. Okay. Now, these guys had actually gone to Harmandar Sahib. Ker Singh was older. So Tuan Singh, they had gone to um, Harmandar Sahib, they realised what had happened. They realised the stories, they talked to people there about how the people were trapped, how there was no warning, how there were thousands of people inside, and they realised what Indra had wanted to do, teach the Sikhs a lesson. Yeah? They decided there and then, Ki asi kuch badla lena hai. Now, Indra Gandhi had been warned, right? in fact, uh, Paji said a little while ago, that the daughter of General Odwaya, uh, General Odwaya yeah, the granddaughter of Odwaya had, had written to Indra Gandhi saying, "Don't what you done in June, you should, you know, you're going to pay for the price for. It. Don't go into attack Harmandar Sahib." Well, it was before June, yeah, saying, "Don't attack Harmandar Sahib," because you're going to pay the price. But she kept her Indian Sikh, she kept her Sikh bodyguards. She was so confident that the propaganda was there, right, that she never moved them. But these guys went there, they came back, they took Amrit just before they did the attack. Okay, so these guys are Amritari on that day. They realized. They went to, the, uh, to uh, Bangla Sahib, so took Amrit and they came back. And then on the 31st of October, they kill her. Now, in the media, as soon as this happens, there is a massive amount of uproar. Obviously, they talk about her being killed. But as soon as they talk about her being killed, and a lot of Sikhs, by the way, in Delhi, were very shocked. The, the a propaganda machine had worked on the Sikhs as well. So they were just as shocked that she'd been killed. And they saw her as Mother India as well. And some people were crying. In the, look, in the official accounts, there were women that refused to cook food that day. Sikh women that refused to cook food that day. In, in, in shock. Right? And yet, 
on the media, suddenly the rhetoric changes. It's no longer, oh, Indira Gandhi has died now, Khun ka badla Khun. These slogans are being chanted from demonstrations. And they're being broadcast on their, on, on their Doordashin and stuff, De- repeat after repeat. Now, if something like this happens, what happens? Every turns on the news. What happened on September 11th? You all remember where you were? What did you do then? Stick to the TV screen and watch what was going on. So what do all the, what do all the people in India do? Watch the TV screens. And what do they broadcast? The anger against the Sikhs. Khun ka badla Khun. Yeah. 31st of October, and on that day, there are beatings and lootings, but there is no murder. Yeah. So this is the thing what happens. On that evening on 31st of October, there is a meeting. Okay. All the senior Congress politicians meet at Ram Pasaroj's house. Okay. The books to read about this are there, talk about this. Okay. There's many books that document this. And all these politicians now make a plan. And Manoj Mitra in his book, which I'll picture in the next slide, he says that the plan to kill the Sikhs in November had been planned before. It was already planned. They were going to do this thing. Because the June thing didn't work. Sikhs were still enraged. So then they said that we have to kill them all over India now. Teach them a proper lesson. So the plan was there to commit the genocide. All that happened is that Indira Gandhi was killed and they brought the plan forward. They brought it forward. It's pre And this meeting, all those people that had the plan, then decided, let's put it into action. Okay? And so, white fa- inflammable white powder was procured. People kept talking about this white powder. It was ubiquitous. Everybody had it. Okay? Kerosene depots were told to make, make kerosene available. Train was organized from Haryana to bring the mobs of, uh, of people from different villages. Yeah? Buses were sh- from the Delhi Transport, Poli- Transport Corporation. Buses were procured. How much can you get? How much state and obvious? M- imagine if red buses. Yeah, double-decker buses took, brought in people to commit the riots. Who would you, what would you call that? It's a government's organized riots, yeah? Um, voters' lists are printed off by all the politicians to identify the Sikh areas. Because everywhere in India obviously takes what religion they are. So they know where all the Sikhs are. Okay? They know the houses. Because when you when your vote list, when you know, when it comes, letter comes to your house, it tells you who you are. Right? It knows your house. So they know where the Sikhs were living. And then speeches were made to incite the mobs. And the plan was put into action that night. So the, it's what, what they now call the Sikh riots or whatever, yeah? This was planned on the 31st of October, 1984. Okay? The murder of the Sikhs. 1st of November, the killings start in earnest. Yeah? Organized massacres in Delhi and across India. Congress politicians were seen, okay, walking around with voters lists and leading the mobs. Okay? The police, they stood by. Many, many records of them actually disarming the Sikhs from Kong, who, were, who were together. So they came up to a bunch of Sikhs who were like, they heard, oh, something's going to happen. Let's get all our shusters and get together. The police would turn up, disarm them, saying, we don't want you to have any pange here, no threat to the police. Give us all your weapons. We will look after you. Go back home. Don't gather in large numbers where you can fight together. Disperse and go back to your houses. Stay in your houses. Stay in your houses. Because we know where you live then. We'll come for you. Yeah? This is, it's all organized. Okay? The messages were coming from the top. Okay? They were giving people false sense of security and they refused to register the reports okay, of people if they were being killed. FIRs they're called, yeah? First Information Report. They refused to accept them. Okay? And sometimes, on many occasions, they joined in by shooting or giving guns yeah? to, pe- to the voters, to the, to, this, uh, to the mobs. President Zail Singh, the President of India, should be the next man in charge, right? Prime Minister has been killed, President's in charge. What does he say? He says, I am helpless. What does he do on the 31st of October, as soon as Indira Gandhi is killed? You know what he does? Instead of saying, I'm going to be the next, I'm going to take charge of a transitional government and bring peace and order here, he makes Rajiv Gandhi the Prime Minister the same day. Same day. Total puppet. The army is not called in for three days. The army is trained in India to, re- to respond to something like this within a couple of hours and bring complete curfew, not let anybody out, bring total peace. The army is not called. Sikh soldiers in the army right, are saying we want to go and do something, they're not allowed to. The army is not allowed to intervene to stop the writing. Not writing, the murder. Okay? It's massacres basically. And the home minister was out, you can't reach him. He's in charge of security. Yeah? And peace in India. He's not available. 
hospitals would not treat the Sikhs. The doctors and nurses were scared that the mobs would come and kill them. And the mobs were waiting at the hospitals. So if you, did, if you got injured, and you limped your way to a hospital, you got killed there. People waiting for you to turn up. These are all, but none, none of this, yeah, it's just stuff for me. It's all written down in the books and the, in the witness accounts. Okay? The books, in the next, sorry, the next slide, you'll see the books that talk about this, yeah? But Manoj Mitra's when a tree shook Delhi, and um, uh, 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 Janna Singh's I accuse, yeah? These talk about this. Politicians and celebrities like Rajiv Gandhi, Amitabh Bachchan, they are out there, you killed our mother. Yeah? Khun ka badla khun. When a great tree falls, then the earth will shake. This is what Rajiv Gandhi says. Okay? But it is not spontaneous. These things did not happen spontaneously, they were planned. It was a pre-planned thing, it was brought forward, okay, it was a state-sponsored massacre. And the facts stand witness to that. I'm going to give you an example now. Okay, that's Janaya Singh there, by the way. Okay, um, that's his book, I Accuse. And then that's uh, the other book, When a Tree Shook Delhi by H.S. Fulka. He's going, to he's going to be very prominent in the one session after this. Um, but he's been a, a, a lawyer and a campaigner since then. And also Manoj Mitra, who's a, um, like a, a, clay, a, like a register, Indian uh, um, journalist. Okay, he writes against state-sponsored um, genocide. This picture at the top, that picture, that is of the Lokpuri. That's how the Sikhs were living in the little houses. And this is the state of it after November. Okay, no roof, nothing burnt down, right? And those are the women who were from the Lokpuri. This is block 32 of the Lokpuri, okay? It was a Sikh block. Pretty much everybody there was a Sikh. And over 500 Sikhs were living there. So obviously the people there felt quite safe. Imagine one big block with 500 Sikhs there. You feel quite safe. It's now called the Widow's Colony. Okay? On the 1st of November, all the Sikhs gathered yeah, at the house of Indra Singh. The police turned up and dispersed the crowd. Go back to your own houses. Okay? Promise safety. Now when the mob attacked, right, the police were by their side. And this guy, HK al Bhagat, he led the mob. Okay, he's a Congress politician. 500 Sikh men and children are slaughtered okay, on the 1st of November. Dragged out their houses and killed. Yeah, burnt, hacked, perisine that we talked about, tires, all those things, right? But then what did they do next? This Kishori Lal, yeah, he's called a butcher because he would walk around with a butcher's knife yeah, to kill Sikhs. So he was called the butcher. People saw him, the women saw him doing this. Now in the evening, all those guys that have done this, these are guys that are bust in, they have a break after all the killing and looting. Then they come back in the evening because now the women are not protected. Yeah, There's 500 families worth of women there. And they return to late rape and loot. The Sikh women are kept naked in big rooms, thrown in, okay, and all night they were gang raped. No one for, was there for them to call for help. There's a history there, Pagi Kaur, she's a lady who's there from Tilokpuri, and she says she was brought up, you know, hearing stories about the Sikhs who were saving the Hindus. And now she couldn't understand what was going on here. An Indian Express journalist called Rahul Bedi, he writes this, he said he turned up there to Block 32 to ask about what would happen here. And he was not allowed inside, they were blocked off outside, they said, it's total peace, nothing's going wrong here. He then comes around the back, escapes the police cordon, comes back in from another angle, turns up to find streets with bodies piled up three, four high. Just streets full of Sikhs, just dead. Now, of all those women right, that survive the night, when the next morning they get up to go to the police station to do something, okay, one guy did survive, Bagiko's husband, which is why she's, you know, what happens? They move to the Klanpuri police station, yeah? And when they move there, the police are waiting and they actually killed her husband there. Obini Bachya. And she says she saw vehicles with hundreds of half burnt Sikhs, okay? And there's no record of these bodies, where they went, just carted off, and again, same thing. Yeah, cremated, no record kept. Now, who are the guilty? HKL Pagat. He's dead. Okay, he was the one who was actually the, in charge of the Lokpuri, where 1,500 Sikhs were killed in his constituency. As soon as this happened in November, 
When Rajiv Gandhi becomes a prime minister, he gets made a cabinet minister. The cabinet is like the closest ministers, isn't it? So he gets promoted. Everybody who gets, who is the most vicious, the most, you know, following the law, because uh, Rajiv Gandhi is the one that's instigated all of this. Okay? So he's uh, promoted straight away. Kamal Nath, that's that guy on the left, he's still alive now. Led the attack on Raghav Ganj Gurdwara. Okay? Sajjan Kumar, these, this is a book called Who Are the Guilty? Yeah? Right? There's a book called Who Are the Guilty? Black book with right writing. Yeah? If you saw that, that interview with Sangat TV, yeah, then uh, that Lord Singh was holding it up. This, this book is available online, you can just download the PDF. Okay? And it documents every single one of these people and what they did and what the statements were against them. If you go on Carnage 84, which is the website set up by HS Fulka, all those statements are up there as well. I'm going to talk about that more next week. Sajjan Kumar and Jaglis Tartar, yeah, those two people down at the bottom. He led the mobs in the areas that were the worst for the killing of the Sikhs. He was a municipal councillor, it's no one, yeah? lower level politician, he gets promoted to MP following this. Taram Das Shastri, yeah? MP, directed killings, these are all people, Jaglish Tartar, he was inciting the mobs. If people got arrested from the mobs by the police, now remember the police was not all generic doing the same thing. In some place the police actually did manage to stop writing. Yeah? Janna Singh in his book talks about instances in some few places. Okay? If people got arrested, Jagdish Tata would turn up and get them freed. And how was he rewarded? Became the Minister of the State. Kishori Lal, he's the one person, one of the few people that got awarded death sentence for what happened in 1984. Okay? This is that butcher guy. He gets then, his sentence gets commuted to life sentence. And then in, 19, in 2013, last year, he's released. He's not even hung. Rajiv Gandhi obviously became the Prime Minister straight away. No other politician is prepared to ask, question these massacres. What you get is sympathies of, statement of sympathies upon sympathies about Indira Gandhi's death and no mention of what happens in Delhi for the next three days. Okay? Even from England, you get letters from us saying, oh, sorry to hear about your, uh, you know, your, your Indira Gandhi being killed. Nothing about the Sikh slaughter, the massacres. And yet, to this day, they still remember Indra's death. Every year they do a whole thing for her death anniversary. And never do they remember the Sikh killings. And, but they tell us, yeah, you should forget. They don't remember <laughs> the Indra Gandhi being killed, but they keep remembering her, but they don't want to remember this. They don't want the Sikhs to remember how many Sikhs were killed. Yeah? Now we're talking all over India, you know, we're talking like 10,000 people. You know, 8 to 10,000 people being killed. But trains, buses, people just pulled off. If you were to see, you know, you've watched the movies and videos, yeah? People would guess, they just pulled off and just killed. I'll give you a personal story. I was there in India at that time, I was five years old in November. And my parents had to travel by train, my mother was back in England. And I was there with my dad. And we were told, my dad, he's Mona, my, my um, brother's Mona as well. But I had my kids growing up. And uh, I was... My colour was taken off me, I wouldn't cut my hair, so they put me in a girl's clothes. We were told to speak Hindi, right? and that's the way to escape at that time. A lot of people cut their gears and just, you know, hid. Now I'm not saying that it was all Hindus that were bad. A lot of Hindus did say, save a lot of Sikhs as well, yeah? But you've got to understand, this is not a Hindu Sikh thing. What happened in November was not a Hindu Sikh thing, it was a Congress and government organised thing. It was state-sponsored genocide, okay? And even the insurance claims of those Sikhs who had their property looted and killed, they were not upheld by the government. What do you think that is? If insurance companies are going to pay out millions because of what the government organised, they're going to kick up a fuss, aren't they? They're not going to say, well, it's just happened an act of God or random right. They're going to say, you organise this. Why should we pay up? So in order to stop that happening, they just said, sorry. We're not going to recognize any insurance claims. The main thing is, was it rights? What is a riot? It's football fans. Yeah, you've got two groups in it, in a riot. If it's communal riot, a communal means one community against another community. This word communal doesn't come up here because England's not that communal. Yeah? But in India it's used because you've got communities. What Putin was talking about. 
But you didn't have two communities against each other over here. There were no Sikhs writing against the Hindus. In Punjab, no Hindus got killed. So it wasn't communal. It was just one way. And it wasn't right. Because people were not claiming. They didn't want anything. They just wanted to kill Sikhs. And they were bust in. They were organized. So the Sikhs that use this word need to think twice. What are they doing? They're buying the state line. The proof is all there. The problem is people don't want to read the proof, innit? In our own families. And the people in Delhi still talk about it now. You go to Delhi and speak to some of the Sikhs, they'll still talk about it. We stayed in this house, we got away with this, these people got killed. No one's forgotten it. There were no retaliations in Punjab. What was the reaction in the press? They just ignored it. Ignored it. Yeah? And they bought the government line. That communal writing happened. Yeah? And they spread that line across. It was just mass, uh, it was just a spontaneous reaction. Right? And if you grow up in India and you hear about this, this is what you will be told. Yeah? And if you watch, like if you, if you watch some of the recent movies that are coming out, you know, from that, that is basically what they said, oh, it's very unfortunate. Now they started to make a few movies about, you know, there was this Amu movie that was not made by an Indian, but it was made by a lady who was a Sikh from uh, uh, Australia and that talks about it as well, that was a screen, it's worth watching that because the police were into it yeah everybody was involved and what happened post massacres? So, what was the name of the film? AMU, A-M-U it's about, it's, 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 a, it's, it's sort of similar to what came up you know how the uh, the recent Sardar Haq kind of story but um, the point was that the lady, she comes back from abroad, comes back to, 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 uh, to uh, and then she finds out about what happened there, yeah? She was actually uh, the leaf worker from Yeah, so, so, so the story is based upon, she, she saw the, uh, the problems that were happening in the, and not, the thing is here is about the camps, okay? Those relief camps were set up were woefully inadequate, okay? They were grudgingly given, okay? Once they'd killed as many people as they could, then they stopped and then the army was brought in after three days, okay? And suddenly, peace was restored. If it was so spontaneous, right, how come it just stopped straight away? Yeah? And then, you have this camp set up, right? But people can't go back to the, you can't go back to the same houses you came from where your family's been killed in front of you, yeah? Where they've raped you, ra raped your daughters. You can't go back there. And, you know, they, they settled off in these other areas. Go on. There's a video on YouTube. Yeah, they put up, uh, put it up in their exhibition. Yeah, yeah. parts of it. Yeah. People, are, people were still, people were hungry, starving, and not, you know, and not looked after. In November is cold, by the way. Yeah, they weren't given blankets and stuff. They weren't exactly, you know, looked after in the relief camps, and they were relocated to different places and given, you know, hardly any compensation. And then on top of that, the biggest slap is the fact that no one was convicted for this. Yeah, just totally forgotten. All the inquiries. We'll talk about more of that next week. Uh, the ne next topic, all the inquiries and what a complete joke it was. Yeah, and it, some of the examples are just literally unbelievable. Yeah, I accuse and uh, you know Jarnal Singh and those people they talk about this in, in detail because they were involved. H.S. Fulka was involved in all these cases, all right? Deeply involved. So why are Sikhs being asked to forget eighty four? It's not being dealt with, isn't it, at all? They, I mean, they don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, because, they, because it's so communal. I yeah. mean, when, when first week of June comes every year, I mean, I watch, I follow the Indian news. I mean, I used to live in Delhi and I worked as a journalist. And in that first week of June, you can just feel a massive undercurrent. I once mentioned the word Bindramala openly. And someone said, don't, don't, don't mention that name. Just forget it, put your head, that head in the sand. Yeah. Don't, don't deal with it because... No, it's not like that. It's, it's, not, it's like, it's there. People know it's there. The Sikhs know it's there, the Hindus know it's there, it's like, it's like, uh, it's very difficult to look within yourself sometimes. And it's, it's that kind of thing. Well, How some, do you do it? Some Sikhs don't even acknowledge that, that it was, uh, what happened with Bindra while it was even a bad thing. They yeah. say that he was a terrorist. Yeah, no, exactly. They, but they buy the state line because they don't want to think about the consequences. If you, if you went through this, then what, what would you become? Yeah. If, you, if you knew these facts, you'd become an activist. You wouldn't buy the state line, right? And then and living there, 
in this, knowing the truth is dangerous, isn't it? In many ways, because you then can't, if, you're, if you've got a conscience, you know there's a zameer is called Punjabi, yeah? If you've got a zameer, if you've got a conscience, you can't then live by the state line and, and the propaganda, because you know that it's wrong. So what do people that don't have a conscience, or they, they can't deal with it, they just dig their head down, by the state line and just, I see but again, let's not talk about it. But, but then you see quite a positive thing in Punjab, there's pictures of Prindar Wale everywhere, even in the Honda songs now it's coming through, so in some ways his image is, is having a rebirth in some ways. Is it changing though? Because if you talk to the older Is it like a Shea Guevara t-shirt? Possibly. It's a recent thing <laughs> because I remember there was a time when um, only certain good boy actually had Brenda Wale's mm. actual photo and then if right. talked about Khalistan, yeah. we were just given looks like why are you talking about it? You know, some don't even mention stuff like that. So I think it's a recent thing that it's become popular again. The thing is, you know, the military attack in 1984, they said that the armed forces lost so many men inside. They lost so many men. But they lost more men in about 12, 15 hours of combat inside there that in the wars against Pakistan. Mm. And the thing is, they can't... You see, when I was there, it's a very patriotic kind of society, Republic yeah. Days, military parades. So the, the army is considered a, one of the finest institutions. And they lost more men inside there. And the state can't celebrate this because it's so, it's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean... I mean, it is dangerous because when I, I mean, I used to make trips to Omri so every other month, and some colleagues of mine say, well, "What are you doing over there? You know, why, why do you keep going over there?" there there's this kind of undercurrent of uh, of shame or guilt or not shame. It's like I don't know. But what I felt there was like, firstly, the Sikhs are regarded as like the Irish people, you know, mm. kind of stupid, you know, kind of mm. they're not they're not clever and that kind of stuff. But I, I. But that's what it's like for me. The kind of making people look stupid. It's all kind of like what Nazi Germany was doing, isn't it? Yeah. They were trying to make. They, they want to dehumanize you. They don't want to make you look as as you are like a normal person, just because they don't want to deal with you know your, your normal demands. To so dehumanize you, objectify you, so they can treat you like an object rather than deal deal with you as a person. I mean, there's yeah. no memorial for this, this. Yeah, and they were crying now about the memorial about the 84 victims that was ha being made in Delhi and. Whose picture was going to be up there and stuff like this? The thing is, you know, when they say something to Nair Singh Ji, is that there's two things. Firstly, in Bangla Sahib Gurdwara, his portrait was always there, and along with the two Sikh bodyguards who assassinated uh, in the Lagandi. The other thing about something to Nair Singh Ji is that I actually discovered some katha by someone called Gyani uh, Thakur Singh Ji who was with him, and he said something very interesting. And there's something in the book that someone over there mentioned. They said, you know, when the Nirankaris did their protest, Santa Janel Singh was refused to go there because the Singhs around him were worried about his life. And they said, some Panjabiari gave him a command that you can't go. And uh, they said that when those uh, 13 Sikhs were killed, it wasn't straight away armed struggle. They basically consulted through the constitution of India how we can actually go through the courts. Because the, the Nirankari sect, they, lost a, they, they won a court battle in Haryana. And once that happened, then he was assassinated. Because it became armed struggle after that, because the, the Sikhs didn't get their justice. Yeah. Well, for me, it's like continually poking someone until they get in a corner. And every time they do anything to say, but, 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 smash them down. Until they've got no option. The thing is that, you know, and if you watch the, there's a quote by, you know, many people have quoted about what the army did after, the, after June, when they, when they when lost so many people, they went berserk killing everybody, every single person they could find who was Sikh. Um, for me, it's like the whole thing was designed to teach, us, teach the Sikhs a lesson. They were never going to learn. A Sikh would never learn that lesson. Yeah. So what they're now trying to do is kill Sikhi. What we're going to talk about in the next session is they're trying to kill Sikhi now because they realize that they can't kill Sikhs. They've got to kill Sikhi itself. And effectively, they're doing it, you know, Sarabji Sarajwana's video you can watch, Rajwana TV, the, the faceless war. That's what it is now. It's trying to kill Sikhi itself, because it's very hard, right, to teach Sikhs that lesson. <laughs> Whilst Sikhs are alive, they will not listen, learn that lesson. So the only way to do it is to get rid of Sikhs altogether by killing Sikhi off. They started that a while ago now, because if yeah. you look at the, the, the young children now in India, uh, not India, in Punjab, or in Jandigarh or those kind of areas, they're speaking Hindi, 
even to speak Punjabi, they, even at such a young age, they see it as such a poor thing to do. Yeah, it's like it's seen as uneducated language. It's not like, you know, in the Punjabi Sima movement, or in the, sorry, in, just to go back to the Singh Sabha, um, Singh Sabha Prachar movement, what was one of the aims? Was to do Prachar in Punjabi and translate books into Punjabi. Yeah? Because they realize they're making Punjabi into a bumpkin language. Yeah? And you know, they're trying to get rid of all the, the be beautiful poetry and stuff. So they're making, f if it, it, Punjabi is being painted as like, um, you know, like some kind of guttural language. And Hindi is like the, you know, the po poetic language and it's all flowery. But all the guzzles and stuff of Bulle Shah, you know, Sheikh Fariji, these are beautiful. But they're not being acknowledged. You know? They're not being given that prominence. So Sikhs are trying to keep Punjabi alive as a working language for, uh, you know, for history research, for, for, um, for education, for philosophy. And basically now, they're kind of succeeding in that, isn't it? Because, you know, there's not many... Punjabi scholars, you know, Punjabi universities and stuff are kind of having to teach Hindi a lot more. And this is not seen, there's no investment. I, we'll talk about this next week, uh, next topic, but, you know, when I was in recruitment, and I'm sure most of you guys here living in the city, you're working with IT people, right, from India. Fair enough, yeah? People who are BAs or uh, developers or you do lazing with. How many people are Punjabi that can code? IT is like the next thing, isn't it? India is all about IT now. How many people are Punjabi that can code? No. Why is that? Because there's no, it, no, there's no IT education in Punjab. And the ones that are coding uh, from Punjab, uh, from Punjab, they must be Hindi. Yeah. Yeah. So what they, they're economically killing us. Yeah. There's no investment into Punjab. Like they said, a one one percent investment into Punjab. Yeah. Let me see what other talking points. What are your views what? On Manmohan Singh. Who's been? Manmohan Singh. I'll give you a good. You know, like this phone now. It's on silent. <laughs> you know, when more, you know, in India, in India, to put your phone on silent, you know what that's called? M MMS, Manmohan Singh mode. <laughs> he is not even, he's not even the head of his own party. Yeah, Sonia Gandhi is the head of the Congress Party, but he happens to be Prime Minister. She didn't want to be, become Prime Minister because had she become Prime Minister, she would have been assassinated, because she was an Indian. Yeah, she's Italian. If you didn't know, Sonia Gandhi is Italian. She looks like an Indian, she speaks Hindi like an Indian, but she's an Italian. Yeah? She was a waitress in Oxford. In Oxford? Sonia Minor. Yeah. Well, you know, look, I mean, there was a, uh, the whole family, the Gandhi family is crazy. Firstly, they're not called Gandhis. Yeah? They should be called Khans. Because <laughs> the, the, Feroz Khan is the husband. Right? But now they call, from Gandhi, they're going to Gandhi. And now, there's, so, they're, so they're, not, they're not really Hindu like. The kids are brought, you know, their, their fathers are Muslim. They're brought up as and their names are being given like they've been given Hindu version names, but they must have, they were firstly named Muslim names. Right? When she got more into politics, they changed all their names. Then she's he Sanjay Gandhi or whatever marries off to an Italian who's Catholic, so he's Muslim, she's Catholic, right? And then their kids are like you know Rahul now they they you know, and I'm I'm not sure if their their wives are are their wives. Yeah okay but yeah, but. The, who was the other one? The Yeah. I mean, these, these people are ruling India as a dynasty. <coughs> What's their qualification? That they descend from Nehru? Now, this is a funny thing people brought up earlier. I don't know if you've heard about this. And this There's quite a lot of truth in it. But Nehru, his surname comes from Neher. Neher means like a, 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 you know, a um, canal. So they are a family that live near the canal. Right? Because when Bugangu Brahmin right, betrayed the um, betrayed the Chote Sahib Zade, right? Then his family, he, obviously people were hunting for him, so he escaped from there, right? And for his services to the Mughal kingdom, he was given some land, right? And that land was near a Neher. He was killed actually, but his son was given the land. His son was given, okay, so then he, so he was then given that land with a Neher, and they, that's where the Nehru's come from. So Nehru traced his lineage back. To realize that his family had been the ones that had betrayed Chote Sahib Zadeh. And he wasn't particularly worried about that, he was quite happy with that. Yeah? I think at the end of the day, say, they, they, they give you the idea that some people are now thinking you want to call this done. I mean, the thing is, the army say that they, you know, that's why they went inside. Yeah. But the thing is, even if you did want to call this done, it's not even unconstitutional. The constitution allows you to have a. 
Well, the Indian constitution was, is, was totally ignored by Indian politicians. Mm. The whole point is here is that everything here, this whole attack in June was unconstitutional. Yeah? The whole system of Punjab having Chandigarh was unconstitutional. All the Sikhs have been trying since the very beginning, even though they were called Hindus under the constitution, was to get the constitution to actually work as it was meant to work. They weren't even allowed to do that. Puran Singh's words, you know, from 1920s are being 100% proven right. Sikhs knew this was coming, right? The culprits here, the British, they created a situation and now, now we're living in their country, right? And then even then they're screwing us over by getting, and sending SAS of people over to give us advice. Give us advice on it. Why do we assume, right? this is a question, that his, I mean, why do we assume that anybody cares about us? Why do we think like loyalty will be rewarded? We keep crying about it, like we're like, you know, bleating lambs, isn't it? Crying, oh, we were so loyal to you. But, you didn't. but in 47 they weren't loyal to us. Sikhs gave so many Qurbaniya in First Second World War, and they rewarded us two years later by splitting our land and making 40% of our Panth refugees. My daddy died in that exact transport when, they, when my dad was nine months old. She passed away, travelling from Pakistan to India. How many other families went through that? You mentioned the Anandpur Sahib resolution as a separatist, uh, they say it was a separatist document. The thing is, when the Anandpur Sahib resolution was like, popular in the 70s, roughly, I think about seven other state governments said that this is the way forward. Mm. Others across India, before it became very, before the state made it very... This is the, this the maligning of the Sikh cause, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, the Sikh cause was about Punjab having freedom. It was a, it was a, nas it was a human rights campaign, isn't it? To give people the right to control their own destiny and give people, like, you know, agricultural prices, decent human wages. It's like minimum wage is the same thing, isn't it? Trying to give people some li a, li a living wage. Yeah? And yet, this was being denied. I mean, one thing I want to ask is, like, why do you think our parents don't talk to us about this? Like, most of our parents, I mean, I don't know how it is for you guys. Maybe now things have changed, but when I was growing up, you know, our parents just did not discuss this topic. They're too scared. They think they just want to get on with their lives. They want to put that bad period behind them. Just look forward now. Just yeah. Think, we're okay now. There's peace again. Everyone's happy. Just forget about what happened and move on. That's what they do. That's just head in the sand mentality. Yeah. And has the Sikhs ever been like this? In our history, we've covered now from Gunan Deji to now. Has the Sikhs ever been the kind of people to do this? There's no history of it in our religion of people doing this, putting their head down and just cowering down. So where does this new generation of parents come from? Where, where, where did where did they come from? These parents that don't even know, like they don't know. They, 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 there's no precedent for this kind of behavior in our country. It's the repercussions of what we just talked about. So they've seen children and whatnot being killed as a result of that and being isolated. And if you mention anything of that kind of uh, mentality, you're going to get picked out and killed. Mm -hmm. so they're trying to protect their children by saying, "Don't, you know, don't talk about it." Put the, put the other mic on, turn it off on the top. But part of that is the indoctrination that's actually worked because just, you know, no, the way the government through stuff about on, it, off there, yeah. about, you know, it's actually going through people's psyche, they actually think that asking for your own rights is actually bad for people. So Sikhs should be asking for their own rights well, because it'll get you killed. Yeah. They'll get you killed. So basically, what for me, that what's happening now is that the Sikh parents, most of them, I'm not saying. Generically, there's a lot of parents that are Jardi Kala want to teach their kids about the history. But what I see from people that I know is that the Sikh parents are pretty much like ostriches, yeah? Right? They don't know their history a lot of the time. But they're going to teach you the bits that are about the Mughals back in the day, but they don't want to talk about what the Indian has done. And they're going to make sure they can keep going to holiday to India. They're scared of you dying. So in the old days, when Guru Rajan Dev Ji is saying in their Bani, Pehla Maran Kabul, Jeevan Kichar Aas, Step one, accept death. Step two, leave your desire to live. Step three, become humble. And step four, go to Guru. This is the steps of a Sikh, yeah? To even get into Sikh, you need to see these three, these three things and then you can get to go to Guru. So what's happening now is, yeah, we don't want to leave our desire to live. We don't want to um, accept death. It's going to come for all of us, isn't it? Sikhs have always looked at death and laughed. You, do, you can't touch us.
I'm just going to finish off the last two things. We know who are the guilty, right? There was massive reaction in Punjab and abroad, okay? Massive reactions. People knew who were the guilty, the books were published, yeah? I'm going to talk about that more in the next session, what happens in 1984, okay? But most of these reactions consisted of this stuff, yeah? Holding protests, trying to get the Western government to do something for us. Which Western government is going to do anything for us? Only if they're going to get something back in return. What are we going to do in June? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to whom? Who cares about us? No one. But we don't care about us. This is the problem, isn't it? No one cares about us, but we don't even care about ourselves. Because we're not getting organized and doing anything. Our own people, the widow colony, is understaffed. And but there's good value worth millions being built. I think we're quite successful here as well, so we don't really want to go back. A lot of, a lot of the community. Not go back, yeah, but do something. We're successful. 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 we Right? Yeah. Who, how many of us but, but here's the question, right? Uh, say, you know why, why did we ever want Khalistan? Well, who, who gave us that word? We must have passed in Khalistan. But, but the point is that Khalistan is not a concept in the Sikh philosophy. But the thing is, I and which Khalistan do we want? I want to take you back to that map. Do you remember that map now? Which Khalistan do we want then? <laughs> is that, do we want that little part of the butterfly, or do you want the bits, the right wing that's in India, or do you want the left wing in Pakistan as well? And do we just want that Punjab? Is that Punjab? Is Punjab supposed to be the Khalsa right? Why? What? What? What's that all about? I think the problem is when the no Sikhs only want to rule the Punjab. Huh? But you, like, there's no sense of direction. Everyone's off doing their own thing. Maybe like maybe fifty years ago, if there was an issue in the bar, you'd have a you'd have a separate cast. So everybody would get together and. You had it in eighty six as well. And you know what? No, everyone's off doing their own thing now. There's no sense of unity when um, I forgot the Baji's name who did the Morja India. You know, suddenly when he was an English person, yeah, there's Why somebody there. Well, let's look to this person. Um, you know, we have someone to look up to, or at least to lead Why by the example. Well, now, you know, nobody's that that sense of leadership or whatever it is not there anymore. For me. But about um, making things happen, what about the case in the Ed Petition and the United Nations General These Hunter? are all petitions. You've got to understand, right? All these petitions are trying to get the UN to recognize something happening. And even if you recognize it, it doesn't address it. There was no truth or reconciliation process in India, ever. No one's ever come up and said, okay, this is what we did, but let's move forward. But the message is loud and clear. But at least right? you're bringing it out in the spot. Live with it. Who's we? Drawing attention to the public. What, by doing this? Well, it's, it's, a not, step, it's, not, it's not binding. So you go to the UN and you have a petition and the UN recognises it. How are they going to force India to look into what's happened? They won't be able to. The issues are in India. The genocide happened there. And it brings it into the, into the limelight and it educates people like myself and people behind us and in front of us. But regarding organisation and actual movement, and, and, and the point that Baji's making about the protest is that we protest here from a safe area. The reason yeah. why parents don't want to talk about it is mm -hmm. from fear. They want to go to India, they've got land, they've got money, etc. Et they know that if they go to the protest, their, their visa won't be cancelled. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> the That's protest right. is a joke. Yeah? But, when, when, but if, they, if there is something serious, right, then their visa will be cancelled, they can't go back to the print. And also, we feel we feel comfortable going to a protest and saying that we've done something to uphold the rights yeah. of people that have been massacred and killed, and then the next day we just go back to our normal lives. Yeah. If it's a protest, what's hilarious is that guy's sign. Can you read it in Punjabi on the bottom right, all the orange turban? Gulam Medini Shani, the sign of slavery. <laughs> well, this, what it, it, might, it might be, you know, I might not realize the irony of that. The sign of slavery is this, isn't it? Mentally slave. The meal Margi Sati. Our conscience is lied down. Why yeah? Sanjay Nazi is saying, I don't fear a physical death, but I fear that my conscience stops reacting. 
is a mirdi mot. Okay? What's happening now is for me is that the six, the conscious is dying. And more importantly, the thinking is dying. The, the, the kind of independent thinking of the six, the kind of thinking that was like Khalsa Raj, Delhi Takht Pe Bethegi Aap Guru Ki Forge. Holding up a sign saying Sikhs want justice. Just think about that sign. Just think, you've got the Guru's root, Guru Gobind Singh Ji's root, and you're holding up a sign saying Sikhs want justice. Will Guru Gobind Singh Ji ever hold up that sign? If we can't picture our Guru holding up a sign, why are we holding up with his roof on it? What kind of sign would our Guru hold up? If they were going to hold up a piece of paper, what, you know, what would they hold up? Justice. Huh? I've got justice. Huh? No, I've, they they won't say, oh, they say Sikhs would give justice. give justice. The sign you can imagine Sikhs holding, Guru Gobind Singh holding up is Sikhs give justice. If they don't, I'll give you justice. We can't imagine our Guru holding saying, I want justice. So mentally, we've got Gulam in Nishani. Our paperwork is our Nishani. Our thought process is our Nishani of being a Gulam. The actual thing that we're doing, if it doesn't lead to anything, then I'll pick Kariki now. What are we doing? If the end doesn't fulfill our goal, then why are we even starting down that road? Mara Singh Salaam, Jawab Dove Kare, Mundo Kutta Jai. One side you salute to him, you bow down to him. Then you say, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. But it says, from the very mind, you start to go wrong. You're going down the wrong route. So one of the things we should do is, through education, educate the young people through means of... Educate who? Well, in India, at least, because at the moment, they don't even think that what happened even happened the way it did. Okay, so they don't know the facts in India. That's, I, I agree with you. They don't, they don't know what happened. If they do know the facts, a lot of them do know, they read the books, but, they, but you know, those guys, they keep it quiet, they keep their head down. It's if, survival mentality, isn't it, over there? It's survival mentality. If people are afraid here, then imagine tenfold in Punjab. Yeah. yeah, well, look, it's just passing. 17, 18 years old, doing a peaceful protest, sitting down, doing Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, and get shot dead by the police. Yeah. And the policeman is not even charged. The thing here is, that if we're going to sit out here, and say we want to educate people, there's no point educating unless you have an end goal. The problem we're not doing at the moment, for me, is what I think is that the Sikhs are not sitting down to work out what the end goal is. What should we actually be aiming for? I'll give you an interesting theory, right? You know about the effect in the UK, because we all saw it. One of the biggest effects in the UK was people started becoming Amritari. There was no Amritaris in Punjab, in England. Very few. You couldn't take Amrit. You couldn't find five Khalsa to give you Amrit. As soon as this happened, people started taking Amrit. Yeah? And they started to become Khalsa. The problem was, they are a lot politically motivated to take Amrit. Huh? Because it looked bad to say Khalistan and not be the Khalsa. Right? But they weren't motivated by Bani Nam, a lot of them. And they sort of paid lip service to that. It was like, oh, we will talk so mentally they were slaves because they didn't know what Bani was saying. Mentally they were slaves, they didn't know what Guru's history was saying, but politically they were active. And you got the wrong kind of things happening there. You got the wrong kind of demands coming out. You can see now what the demands that are coming out. The things we've been doing for 30 odd years, repeating the same system again and again and again. We're going on a, on a, on a you know, we don't see that we're on a mouse on a hamster trap. We don't see that our protests are so safe that the police leave us alone to protest. There's something wrong. When you're outside number 10 Downing Street and the police aren't there and you're there. That means your protest is not taken seriously because you're not a threat to anybody. <coughs> if Prime Minister got attacked, the Sikhs probably be defending the place. We're like policemen there. The thing we've got to work out as a punt yeah, is exactly what happened and what should our aim be. Okay? Did we want Khalistan? Was that the aim of the Gurus? That the Punjabis have their own little land? So what is it? if this is a Sikh aim, if it's not if it's a Punjabi aim, fair enough, they wonder. What is a Sikh aim then? We've got Sikhs coming off from white, black, all types. Okay, dharam, yeah. So our aim should be dharam, righteousness. Is India a dharmi country? Is India got a lot of righteousness inside it? Okay. Who is discriminated against in India? 
Oh, oh, oh minorities in India are discriminated against. Kashmiris, they don't get it. Yeah. If you're Assamese, you don't get it. Tamil Nadu, they don't get it. Women don't get it. Low caste people don't get it. So where did we start fighting for only Sikh rights and not for the rights of all Indians? I think Sanjay Nasing said is that among us that was attacked, the foundation of Khalistan would be laid. True, Sanjay Nasing is that. Yeah. Yeah? But Sanjay Nasing might have said Khalistan should rise over the whole of India. Now we might remember those lines he said about the foundation of Khalistan, right? But what about the times that he said the Singh should go out there and save people? There's no point hanging on to two lines, Sanjay Nasing. Yeah? And by the way, Sanjay Nasing is still a, one Khalistan. We need Panjit Yari. And if things don't work, he was A, he was not a politician. I've got a lot of respect for Sanjay Nasing, I've got a lot of love for him. Yeah? But he was not a politician. Yeah? He was a Pracharya. I think he's only a guy in South again the theory about Khalistan, which I thought was very interesting. Because the reason why Khalistan exists is that because Hamanda Sam was not attacked for the first time, because he'd been attacked many times in the 18th century. Because why is it that the Sikhs then didn't go for a separate homeland? Because, because, because the objective then was to get rid of the Afghans out of Punjab. Because, you see, this particular military operation was conducted by the indigenous people, you know, the, the yeah. Hindus, for example. Yeah. So, India. Uh, how can you get the Hindus? It's Can't a different out. scenario. You can't get out, so you take the land. Yeah. So, so it's a last resort. But, it, but here's, let's flip it over, right? India is not a Dharmi country. We're in India. <coughs> So why don't we just take over India? It's democracy, isn't it? Build your numbers, take over India. Become a politician, become wildly popular. Look at this, uh, this uh, KFGD, what, what's his name? The uh, Aam Aadmi Party. Yeah. He's a hero, isn't it? Of the common person, right? He's now the head of the Delhi government. So if Sikhs just started doing what Sikhs are supposed to do, I serve everybody regardless. We'd be the most popular, least corruptible politicians in the whole of India. And if we stopped talking about Khalistan, but talked about taking over India and making it into a dharmi country, dharam youth, righteousness, justice for all, deg, deg, pati, we started talking about that stuff, and we haven't tried it yet, but I'd wager that we could take over India and have it. A Khalsa Raj in India. With the Khalsa's in charge, but everybody's free. Yeah? The son of Raj, a Guru, guru uh, 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 Arjun Lady talks about, Halemi Raj, a compassionate kingdom. Yeah? But we never thought that big, innit? That's the problem. Most of our people aren't thinking of Sava Lakh Se Ek That one of us is 125,000. I'll give you a scenario, okay? If you took in English population, British population, sorry, not English population, and did the Khalsa maths on it, yeah. divided by 125,000. Do you know how much you get? Any, what maths is in us? 6 million divided by, 60 million divided by 125,000. It's about 500, 500, 600 people. How many, how many MPs are there? About 500, 600 MPs. So 500, 600 MPs run this country, right? So why are we not thinking that way here? You've got people walking around openly saying we want to make this country into an Islamic country. Right? They don't mind. In every Muslim's dream is at the end of the day, yeah, the Khalifa and all over the world. But yet they're, they're allowed to go along with their religion, they can preach their religion, no one stops them. They can say their, their uh, slogan and their nari quite openly. But a six heart now comes into his mouth. And you tell him to say, Openly, if the Khalsa should rule over England, or the Khalsa should rule over the world. People will get scared by us, don't say that. But what is going to happen in the Khalsa Raj? Religious freedom for everybody, justice for everybody, human rights being protected, food for everybody. What, are we, what, are, what is our Raj meant to do? Is it going to convert everybody? No. We've never done that when we had our own Raj. The problem is, that's the problem. It won't like to have a system where you can influence and corrupt. And that wouldn't work. Sorry? If there was that system in place, yeah. which we would like to have, then people who are influential right now, who can corrupt and influence from the top down, wouldn't be able to have that power. Yeah. So that would be the problem. So we're against, right, the 1% the that are on the world, isn't it? Yeah. 
From his very inception, right? You've got to understand this. Your very inception, <coughs> Sikhi has been against the powers that be, the powers that rule. We're revolutionaries from our very birth, buggy. And what's happening now in our pant, right, is that we've lost the buggy mentality, we've lost the Raj mentality, we've lost the I'm not going to beg anybody mentality, right? And what we become a petitioning, begging, someone help us please mentality. Why doesn't the world do something? What we didn't forget is we are the solution that the world is looking for. We're not, the world isn't going to do something for us, we're going to do something for the world. We don't think con- that way. It's a connotation as well, though, of those words, ruling the world, people get scared of it because they don't understand. What do they say? Raj Gariya Khalsa? No, no, I mean, people who don't understand. How many understand of you would shout that every, every Ardas? Don't you look at those words and understand what they mean? It is, it's an educational point. It's because people, myself included, are not educated enough to move along that line. So the more educated we become, yeah, the, the more we can think yeah. about the reality of what we need to be. It's like you say, like, oh, I'm a lawyer. I don't know what everyone else does, but how many people are politicians here? Or in a political party? Nobody. Because there's a fear attached to it. You don't want to be a politician. You don't want to stand up and say, this is me for your stance, this is my convictions, what I believe in. Because we're all too comfortable living in the UK and going back to what we know, everyone's going to get up for work. But who, you know, what we know, has been decided for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we've been like, But you know, like, um, I remember there's a great quote. Um, there was two, to- there was two, uh, I think it was Cameron or somebody else, maybe even before that. They were like, you know, at, at public school, and they were going off to university. And they were both public school. You know what they said to each other? See you in Parliament. Yeah, it was uh, Cameron and... Uh, they brought up Cameron. The mayor, the mayor of London, what's his name? Boris, yeah? Yeah. They, they brought up... They brought up with the mentality that you are going to You are going to become MPs, you are going to become the leaders. They brought up to lead. If anyone wants These to say private schools are training the leaders of future. Our bank is not wanting to lead. If anyone wants to say a picture on that, just Google the Bullingdon Club. The Bullingdon Club, yeah, exactly. And you'll see a picture of some 16 year old in a picture, a school picture, and they're all sitting there. Yeah, but you know, the argument against it is, you know, it's because they're privileged society, they have wealth, they have money, but education is free. Yeah, lots of doctors and lawyers, aren't they? Yeah. No, but we are being told to stay in those middle class, isn't it? The white collar working class, yeah? That's what we're talking about. This is where you belong. You don't belong up there, but you don't belong down here. And we're happy in the middle, yeah? We don't train our kids to become leaders. We don't give them the mentality to see Raja Karnaya, you're going to be the next MP. You're going to be the next running this country. We don't think he, the head of the country, could be a saint. So we've got the slave, basically, this is called the slave mentality. If you ever got the ruling mentality, you've got the slave mentality. If you're asking for other people, then you're not giving it away. And I want you to understand this, yeah? If anything we can take away from this, why did this happen to us? Somebody asked this question last time in the White Group in, in, in Southall. They said, how do you reconcile November and June and all the stuff that's happened to us in sport? He said, how do you reconcile that with the Kala Puris for Kam Tera Kiya Mitha Lagi? Yeah. Go back to this, yeah? That's how I, I, I go back to this. What if we had followed our Guru's Hukam? Would any of this happen to us? If we'd followed our Guru's Hukam? If you go through the lectures on Oxford, the, the political philosophy of Sikhism, yeah, you'll see there's three very important Shabbas in Gurbani, right? That talk about the world. And they come in sequence in Guru Sahib Ji. And the first one talks about that Kalkati, Raja Kasai, that the world is dark in, in darkness and the kings are the butchers. But people stop at that Shabbat because it describes Kalju. Yeah? Then you go to the next Shabbat. Because Guru Sahib never gives a problem and no solution. The next chapter talks about Kirtan. That Kirtan is the thing that's going to solve the problems. Naam is going to solve the problems. And then the next chapter says this. Between the righteous people, the Tharmi people, and the unrighteous people, they can never be in lines. They can never be in lines. So from the very beginning, we should have understood this. The Jara Khalsa, you know, it has to keep power for itself. Really, you can share... Uh, wealth, you can share economics, 
But the Khalsa must rule independently without anybody else telling you what to do. It must rule only from the Gurus and Hukums. You know, we can't share power. Ranjit Singh faltered in that. His rod crumbled. You, know, you saw how he faltered. He kept sharing power with everybody but the Khalsa. And since then, then we had people again willing to share power. Even if we got, took the country with only 10%, 20% of the population, we didn't, we didn't want to take it. We were too scared. And Akali Fula Singh would have taken those odds any time of the day. 20%? You go, you're laughing. <coughs> Give me 5%. Do you not think that this, this religion is roughly what, from the inception of the Khalsa is roughly just over 300 years old? Yeah. And I was having a conversation last week with a guy in Southport who's part of the Dunkhalsa. He goes, you know this religion? He goes, it's only half a millennium. Yeah, it's very young religion, yeah. I said, yeah, I said, if you look at, I said, if you look at Christians, for example, in the first four or five hundred years of their... They weren't even set up, they didn't even have a book. They, they didn't have a book. Yeah, they, were, they, didn't, oh, they didn't even have a book. Yeah, I mean, isn't it like... <laughs> Is it, is, it, is it the seeds are just chipping away very, very slowly yet, the gold is? Yeah. Are we chipping away or are we falling away from the gold? Well, I mean, okay, very, very, obviously the Khalsa can go back because Mara has given the Hukam Raj to the Khalsa, yeah? It will happen one day. But you're right, I mean, when people say, oh, where are you now? You know, when people come on the channel and they go, uh -huh, you are a joke, talking about Raj and talking about, you know, Prachar and stuff. You're only, what, 2% of the Indian population, you're, you're all Punjabis, hardly anything growing outside. And that's when we give that jawab, ki hale time hega. We only be being persecuted for all of our inception. Yeah, don't worry, we're going to stand up. That's the answer we give then, right? But that's to somebody externally who says, well, you're already doing much. But when we look at ourselves internally, when we look at ourselves in the shisha, you know, what do we answer we give then? Oh, it's all right, we've been persecuted for many years. The only time you change something is when you recognize where you fall down. I you know it's that known unknowns and unknown unknowns, isn't it? If you have a known unknown, you're like, oh, or you have a known, like, you know we have to do something, but we, you know, at some point we'll do it. But I think people here have forgotten that they're supposed to do something in the first place. Like, what is Sikhi made for? Guru Sahib decided Sikhi was made so that everybody in the world would have food and everybody in the world would have freedom. That's why Sikhi was created, Deg Deg Fateh. The principle was to rule the world and give everybody freedom and everybody food. Now, how many people can truly right, say that that is what they think the Sikhi was created for? Now, among the Sikh community, when you go to the Gurdwara on a Sunday, right, and you see them going around their normal Brahmical stuff, Pandit Khamenei, and you can book yourself a Sukhmi Sai part, and they will read it for you, you can't read it for yourself, yeah? Do you think that principle reflects in the Gurdwara today? That we are training leaders in order to, you know, give the world freedom and give the world food. So what are we doing? We're making ourselves fat. Going through the motions. <laughs> well, we're not, we're, but that's the thing well, I asked earlier. Where are the Sikh parents? Where is, what, there's no precedent for these parents that we've got now in our history. So are they Sikhs? Are we Sikhs? You know, there's a video. What would Gurnati just say to us today? But you have this notion about Sikh parents not educating children's spirituality or Sikhism. Do you not think that's just a sy symptom to a wider problem in the world, in the world that, you know, there's more, they say the fastest growing religion in the world is atheism? Yes, yeah, so I said that. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm a Muslim guy trying to with Islam and I said, no, it's not. Put him in the pool. No, that's true. Okay, religion, okay atheism is a fast way. However, in country, for example, they say, I mean, I, I was, I was talking, talking to a guy once uh, about social benefits, for example, and he said, uh, well, the government wants to cut housing benefit. I said, that would never happen. Because the reason why the poor get housing benefit and job seekers allowance or whatever is to keep them, you know... In, in the poverty cycle. No, not poverty cycle, just give them so much. I mean, it was <coughs> in uh, Osborne, and I said, come on, that's it, housing benefit finish. There'll be a revolution. There'll be a revolution. Yeah. Be it's a like, um, yeah, you're right, give them the scraps on the yeah. table. Enough to keep them happy, not not enough to uh, get them, uh, you know, to keep them hungry, lean and mean. But in the, yeah, I agree. The thing is, you know, like the the banking system is so messed up as well. You know, most people don't understand how money is created by banks. <laughs> Honestly, if you just go online and look in conspiracy theories, you go mad. But the one biggest conspiracy theory is the obvious one: money. Yeah, you know, Henry Ford is saying, if people understood the banking system, there will be a revolution before tomorrow morning breakfast. Yeah. How a bank takes four, six, six percent off you, 
but create some money from thin air. Well, a lot of people say it's crazy. Banks now because of what's happening. Huh? Communities are setting up their own banks. Yeah, well, you know what? I'll tell you a funny thing about that. Yeah. Go and check any good or constitution in this country. Right? A good one to play is start with Singh Sabha. Go and look at the Singh Sabha constitution. If you don't have it. Uh, the constitution of the good one. You want to find it, I'll give you a copy. Read it. Very clear, and it says the castle should have its own bank. It says in the, 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 the aim of the suburb is to run its own bank. Can you control money? That's it. You've got it made. The castle should have its own bank. And guess the Punjab and Sindh bank. That was a bank set up by the Sikhs. That was a Sikh bank. Yeah? And then it got nationalized, and it's now become an Indian bank. But it was run by the Sikhs. It was a Sikh bank. The Sikhs of our movement and those guys, they done, they set that up to give independence to the Sikhs, financial independence. And it was taken off as well. Yeah? So we should be setting up a bank in this country. Everything the Sikhs have, we spend money to other people to do, we could create ourselves because people trust the Sikhs. There was an island in Hong Kong, yeah? And the only people allowed on that, on that island were the Sikhs. Because it was full of ammunition. The depot is the arms depot, and the only people allowed to go on the island were the Sikhs. They trusted the Sikhs that much. 80% of this Hong Kong police force was Sikhs yeah. at the turn of the century. So we could run the banks, and people would trust us with their money. But we don't think they're going to trust us with money. We haven't got that wish for us. They trust us with their teeth, and their medical bills, and their, and their, and their whatever. They would, but they will not trust us. No, 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 they will never vote for us. No, they will never trust us. We haven't got that thing anymore. Why won't they? Why not? We're the cause of good witnessing. Why not? <coughs> I think if you never see community, it's like, I don't want to sound kind of... Spirits being broken as well. Not, not like that. I think the seats are very simple-minded. I mean, no. uh, I, I remember this grumpy was telling me he, he, his family had to flee the massacres in Delhi. Mm. I remember he said to me, he's found about five, six years seven, eight years ago, he goes, he said there's a lot of houses in Delhi now, for example, seat houses, where she carry, where they have ammunition and things like that under there, mattresses and things like that. It's this kind of self-awareness. Maybe it comes very slowly. Mm. Well, no, I mean, I think the complacency is back in India. I mean, uh, Delhi might be a few people, but, you know, I'm sure the, compl the Sikhs in Delhi are still, I mean, have they been there recently? And I think the situation there is dire. <coughs> it's too late to talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, thank you so much for today. Uh, you've been a great audience to talk to in, in a good bazaar. It's always up to um, Don't be too disheartened, yeah? You, you can be disheartened with the current state of the fund, can be disheartened with what's happening, but don't be disheartened because Maharaj is far to fight here, yeah? Let's remind you one fact that before 84, yeah? There was not many cars in, in the West, yeah? yeah? And now they're everywhere. And I go to programs 10 years ago, I used to know everybody. Because <laughs> they were all people that you knew from the camps. And now you go to a program, you don't know anybody. And they all walk out with Pagan Dari's like, where did those cars come from? <laughs> yeah? So there's a lot of Shaheeds that have come back into the Pant, yeah? Since 1984, anybody who's under 30, right? 30 years ago, there's a lot of youth that are into Sikhi that are under 30. Yeah? For me, those are all the Ruhan that have come back from India, all those souls. Yeah, they've come back. So the Pant is in Chardikala. Right, yeah, it is. There's a lot of lot of kirpa happening in the Pant right now. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. I'm not, you know, uh, all all. I guess our aim basically is to get let's let's know our history, so that we can direct those passions and those efforts in the right way. Because if we don't know our history, we don't know where we come from. We're going to go wrong. Now, Gurus have already taught us how to do things properly. It's up to us to learn. And follow that example. If we don't know it, then we should learn it. The, thing, the real thing to take away from here for us today is to learn the history and learn where the people that did stuff in our band that was successful got their power from. And that is Gurbani. If you're the kind of guy or girl that gets very passionate about E4, passionate about those things, but you don't get passionate about understanding what Zepti Sahib means, yeah? and that's a lot of people nowadays, don't get passionate about this to Bani or Keaton, right? then you may have got the balance wrong here. Yeah, the word is san sipahi, you know sipahi san. Bella san, fir sipahi. Because you won't know what to do with that shasta when you get given it to you. Unless you've got the san, shant, shant, shant inside you. Okay? So start 
understanding the Bani and the history. Yeah? All right. There's also videos on our channel, obviously. Learn that just as much as you want to find out more about 84. Learn about Bani. Yeah. The teachings there. All right. Guru Sahib started off with that. There's a reason why Guru Sahib starts up with Sahib. Okay. So we'll finish off. There's loads of videos on the channel. The Jab Sahib playlist has little summaries as well at the end, which you can summarize up. So watch that. So Maras ke paakar ek paan tu bhi jaldi kala. We go back to what Maras told us. Yeah. So for all those people that have died, for all those people who are coming back into our pond to give a charity kala, let's do a jagara. Jagara ka jaave, ne haal ho jaave, guru se khino paave, guru bhar jaave to paave, guru bhar akal. Sri Akal. Dek dek. Fateh. पंत की जीत पंत की जीत राज करेगा हासा राज करेगा हासा जो कज के बुलाए सो निहाल वाहिकुर्जी का हासा वाहिकुर्जी की